Hey everyone, it's Joe here from Live and to Learn, and um, back on another glorious uh, Dublin day. We're having a very unseasonably warm May here, and that's kind of uh, got me thinking. A couple of friends of mine are out on, on hikes and stuff, some of them for their first time in, in weather like this, and it can be a bit daunting. Um, it's another element to try and tackle, so I thought I would share some of the hints and tips I picked up along the way from people like John Bishop and my own personal hiking experience in weather like this in different climates. When it comes to um, building up a skill set um, in and around bushcraft and being in the wild, uh, it's it's nice to learn your environment and stuff like that, but it's also a good kind of mindset or mentality to start thinking about skills that don't involve um, trees and wood and timber and plants because they are um, either seasonally, environmentally or climate uh, dependent, whereas you can still build up a very good skill set um, to keep yourself um, uh, in prime condition or in, in, a, in a pleasant state um, when it, in the wild in various different countries and stuff like that. This year I'm going hiking in Italy, I'll be hiking in Tennessee and they're all uh, different times of the year and different environments so that's why I like to develop a skill set that doesn't um, rely solely on nature and more on just self-regulation and a bit of kit. So the first thing I'd like to talk about um, in this weather is, is is ways to maintain your core temperature. It's only going to be a short video which is some hints and tips that I've picked up along the way and um, from people like John Bishop and my own hiking experiences. The first thing that uh, I'd, I'd start with is before you leave your house. Um, Tor Bjorn um, from All in Nature Sweden brought this up at his, at his last class and it's a very good way of thinking about it but before you leave your house you should be um, looking at the challenges that are going to face you when you're out on the trail. In weather like this you, you know you can kind of semi predict the coming so the first thing that I would do is pack, you know, pack, pack a plastic bottle, doesn't have to be an algae bottle but try and keep it to one litre, one litre is a fantastic size, when out on the trail um, I recommend uh, one litre water bottles in all my videos whether it's smart water or volvic water bottles or anything like one litre just because it, the less you have to think out in the wild the better so one liter is kind of the universal measurement of water purification tablets and stuff like that so once you have this full there's no second guessing as if you're using iodine and various water purification methods so a one liter bottle and then these guys oral rehydration salts you can never really predict every element when you're out on the trail so you could be sweating a lot, you could have a, an adversely warm day, you could have a rainy day where you have to wear waterproof clothing, which it'll again will cause you to sweat a lot. And you can't always calculate two litres of water a day will keep you safe. So a way to boost that is by using rehydration salts. This is why I use bottles with graduated measurements, again not wanting to think so much in the field. These usually work with 200 to 250 millilitres of water so you can keep a good record of this. So this would be the first thing I would do. I would carry one of these for every day that I'm out on the trail and whether I feel dehydrated or not, I would drink it. A good way to tell your hydration levels is by your urine. You don't want it to be a straw color, you want it to be light straw to kind of clear. You start seeing um, your urine change color, you're kind of already too far down the road, but it's a good time to start looking into this. It's a good one when you're out on the trails in these warm weathers. I would never leave home without it. Some bottles have a storage lid in the top. Just keep four or five of them, a couple extra. I have them that are about my bag. That's a great one. But then when you're out on the trails, especially in weather like this, you want to regulate your core temperature. Now we're not going to get into layering and such in this video. The um, it, it, Layering is a whole other thing that I'll get into at another time. But I just want to share a few tips and tricks with you. The human body is like a car engine, or any engine for that matter. It has certain points, like a radiator in the front of a car, with, with large bodies of air passing through it, and it allows us to keep the rest of the engine cool or stop it from overheating. The human body is no different. Underneath your armpits, here and here, and in between um, your thighs, where your little triangle would be, and your feet, and the top of your head, are two, the best points for cooling your body down. And also these tips as well um, would be great for heating your body up and don't and are not environmentally dependent or um, seasonally dependent these tips will, will do you forward 
So first thing I would do is I would calculate in regular breaks um, for every hour you walk or for every two hours you walk, I would allow 15 minutes to a half an hour to just sit down and let your core temperature um, regulate itself. Because it, most people when they do um, start setting up trails and distances, they'll be like from two hours from point A to point B to point C and you will have to take a break. You should be taking breaks in this warm weather. And then they'll kind of get a bit angry at themselves or whatever because they're not reaching destinations in time. So just allow 20 minutes, 30 minutes, be able to chill and relax a bit. So the first thing I would do is I would take my bag off and I would sit down by a tree in what's called the X pattern. And you just put your back against the tree and you would either hold your arms above your head like so and you would spread your legs akimbo and you get face into the breeze. This allows air to flow underneath you here and up and around your gusset. This is why hiking trousers have a breathable gusset on them as well and it's great. This is the quickest way to get airflow over the radiators that is your body, your armpits and between your thighs. Take your boots off if you get a chance, especially if your socks are wet. This is where I'm gonna get uh, onto this one in a minute. Uh, wet socks and a breeze will cool your feet down great idea in the summer bad idea in the winter but a great idea in the summer one it will also dry your socks out and when you put your boots back on it'll be a little bit better but what happens is these thermal effects where um, the sun hitting your sock or hitting a sock will cause sweat or water to evaporate and when that water evaporates with wind is circulating around it the cold water vapor traveling across the surface is what will cool your feet down your feet are also a great radiator for your body but that's where this trick comes in. Some of you may have seen the Marlin Spike video. Again, like I was saying, it's a very useful knot for various things. Inside here, I have a stainless steel bottle, which is why I carry one stainless, one plastic. Again, it's round, one liter in size. But what you would do is you would soak your sock up. I always wear black socks anyway. But you would soak this sock um, in a river or with water or anything you can. Place your water bottle full inside the sock place it in direct sunlight and preferably somewhere where there is a bit of a breeze and then with those thermal effects of the water evaporating and the wind blowing across it it will cool the water in this down will it be like a fridge no but it will drop it most of the time lower to kind of core body temperature or well, lower than your core body temperature and that brings me on to another thing just a few simple tricks before i go in regards to pre-planning and um, what you're going to do it on the trail do not drink cold water. Um, they, they, this is kind of common knowledge when it comes to dehydration victims, that the first thing you want to do, or people suffering from a bit of heat stroke, is to drink large amounts of cold water. Yeah, it's very refreshing, but what you don't realize is that your body has to work harder to process that cold water. So it is always best, like using a method like this, or putting a bottle in a shade or in a river for a few minutes, that your body, one, you'll be able to consume more. It's very hard for your body to to drink cold water in a large amount, whereas room temperature water is, is fine. Plus your stomach has to work very hard to heat that water up and process that water down. And when it comes to core temperature regulation on warm days, you, you want to keep your heart rate as low as possible. So have, drinking large amounts of cold water causes your stomach to work harder, which causes your heart to work harder, which in turn will bring your core temperature up. So the momentary relief that you get from drinking cold water is fast abated by the fact that your stomach has to work harder and your core temperature will rise back up to where it's supposed to be. Second, I'm a huge fan of energy drinks. I don't think anybody uh, anybody would, could uh, or I could argue with anybody against that. But energy drinks out on the trail, especially on a hot day, are not your man. Again, drinking energy drinks causes your heart to beat faster, which in turn will cause your core temperature to raise. Anything that involves caffeine or large amounts of sugar is just a no-go on a hot day. In the evening times is when you should drink this, like I was saying earlier, about your diorally and stuff like that when the weather is a little bit colder. But over the course of the day, on a warm day on a trail, you should just be drinking body temperature or slightly lower than body temperature water. Anything that contains large amounts of salt. So on the trail, um, you try and bring a kind of more or less than salty trail mix because salt makes your kidneys work. And when your kidneys have to work, again, your ticker has to work. Your ticker is your core engine here. So when your heart is again working because of the large amounts of salt in your body, your core temperature is going to raise. So avoid salts, caffeine, energy drinks, anything with large amounts of sugar in it, you should be trying to concentrate on slow release calories, pastas, breads, 
nuts, stuff like that. So those tricks though will also keep you warm on cold days. And that's another video um, for another time on ways to manage uh, your core temperature in more colder environments. But I hope everybody is getting a chance to get out and enjoy this weather um, and being safe in it, staying hydrated and staying on top of your core temperature. It's a fantastic period um, in Irish weather and a great excuse to get out and see the outdoors um, for what it can be. I hope these tips help. If you've got any tips, I'd love to hear them um, and regulate your core temperature. There's always nifty bits and tricks, but until then, um, Joe from Living Clear and Out and Happy Treads.